the very first time I saw WASM or WebAssembly, my mind was blown. I could write C-sharp code and execute it directly inside of the browser. And then when I learned about Blazor and able to build full stack web apps directly in C-sharp without ever having to worry about JavaScript at all, I was sold. That's how I wanted to build web apps. But what if I wanted to run that same WebAssembly code outside of the browser? That's where Wazi comes in, and I'm going to tell you everything about the new WebAssembly system interface. So tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James, and let's get into it. WebAssembly and Wazi, if you will, are some brand new technologies. Well, not brand new, they're several years old at this point, but WASI itself is newer technology, enables to do really cool things with all sorts of different programming languages. And specifically me as a C-sharp developer, I get really excited because if I can take my C-sharp code to more places and new experiences, then that gets me really excited because me as a C-sharp developer, I want to write my code and run it everywhere. So let's break down a few things. What is WebAssembly? Well, WebAssembly is essentially a new type of code that can run in modern web browsers. So programming languages like C Sharp, for example, can compile down into WebAssembly, and then you can run it side by side JavaScript. Now this works uh, because there is a set of WebAssembly JavaScript APIs that allow you to run these sort of and load these WASM modules into a JavaScript app. And then you can share kind of functionality. You can go back and forth. So this gives WASM performance and flexibility. Um, but of course, you know, even though browsers are available in many, many places, including mobile devices and on your computer or anywhere like that, you know, WebAssembly itself is so restricted inherently to running in the browser. So what if we wanted to run WebAssembly outside the browser, right? What would we need? Well, we would need some sort of, you know, host or runtime, if you will, to run and execute that WebAssembly code, make sure it's safe and secure wherever we're running it. You'd also need some sort of common interface that would give you access to certain system level things, right? You think of like file system or networking, for example, and that's where OASI comes in, the WebAssembly system interface. So you can think of it like this. It gives, uh, given a WebAssembly module. So here's a WebAssembly module a WebAssembly runtime, and we also would call this a host, you can load it and you can execute it. And there are actually a bunch of them out there already, like WASM time, for example. Now, the cool part here is that with .NET 8, there's actually experimental WASI support built right in to .NET, which is really, really cool. And I'm going to put a link to, to uh, Rich's blog post below going through all this, but let's go ahead and just get into it. Now, the very first thing that you're going to need to do is install .NET 8, but also what we want to do is install the Wazi experimental workload. So I'm going to say .NET workload, and then you'll say install Wazi experimental. That's all you need to do. Now I've already done this. So all I'm going to do is just say .NET workload list, and then that will show you all of your uh, ones you have uh, installed. So here I have the Wazi experimental. I have Aspire, iOS, Android, Maui, all that good stuff installed there. So we're totally good to go. So the next thing that we need to do is actually create a WASI console application. So I'm gonna pop over to VS Code, here we go, and I'm just inside of a folder. Now, remember, I'm not gonna create a web app, I'm actually just gonna create a console application. That's a really cool thing. Think of it of taking and actually running code that you may have inside of some sort of service or something else, maybe even an HTTP, HTTP server, for example, you could spin that up and run that anywhere. So here's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say .NET new WASI console, uh, so it's basically just a council app, but a WASI council app. And let's go ahead and open it up. And here we go. We have hello world, hello WASI council, totally good to go. Now, if we look through this a little bit more, and this project template was installed for me when I installed the workload, so we can see it's a normal C sharp application. So here we have the solution explorer. Let me make this a little bit bigger. There we go. And we have our file explorer, but then we have our C sharp dev kit giving us our solution. We can see our dependencies in here. We have properties. We have all the good stuff that's in here. Now, the program is just a program, but if I open the project, we can see that it is just a standard .NET SDK targeting .NET 8, but the runtime identifier is WASI WASM. So WASI is going to be running our WASM code, and you can even trim it as well. If I go into the assembly info, this is where we're going to see some information like supported OS, which is the WASI runtime, which is really, really cool. There's also this runtime configuration, which is saying where to actually run it, which in this case, we're going to use WASM time, which we'll talk about a little bit in the future here. 
But let's go ahead and take a look and actually run this application. So let's open up program CS. All I got to do is say .NET run. There we go. And this is going to compile up our application and then it is going to compile to wasm and then it's going to run it inside of the app host so check this out we see that the wasm app host we have some runtime information here and then we are running it in wasm time right so it's actually running inside of wasm time um, and it's executing this command here and then it says hello wasi council now, again this isn't running like on the dotnet runtime on my machine right it's actually running inside of wasm time when you go to wasm time.dev is a fast and secure runtime for WebAssembly, and it can kind of be like run anywhere like you can just install the installer like i did for windows i did do that um, you can install it on the windows subsystem for linux which is really cool too and there's like tons of executables that you can pretty much install anywhere which is really really cool so when you go over to the the wasm time open source project you can see the releases you can see everywhere that it can run which means that same exact wasm code that i'm running here just inside of wasm time on my windows machine can run on any of this here which is really really cool now i could do other things too like i could access uh, the file system for example or networking all these other things and run that executable code right there which is really really cool so i could do all of that which is really neat so check that out wasm time it's all open source which is neat but what else can we do for example inside of this thing and let's actually prove to you where it's running i love to do this uh, and i do this all the time when i'm running uh, uh my different inside of wsl and, and uh, mac and all these different things let's actually add in here using system.runtime.interopt services okay and instead of hello world let's do a console.write line and let's do runtime information dot uh, os description there we go and let me just copy this a bit and then let's do dot os architecture and then let's do framework description just to kind of prove what's going on here and let's save that file and then all i'm going to do now again is just run the application and now we're going to get three different items back down here we get that it's running the os description the os is wasi right so it's not windows for example right and then the architecture is wasm and it's running on dotnet 8. Oh, which is really, really cool. Now you may have noticed that there's this runtime configuration app bundle, and this is the app bundle that sort of gets deployed over here. So if I drop this down and look in the bin, you can see the app bundle that's going on here. And there's a bunch of stuff inside here. So here's also a bunch of DLLs, a bunch of other stuff, a bunch of temp files, things like that. And there's the .NET.WASM that's being executed, the little WASM icon, which is really cool. Um, and then we have this runtime configuration. Now this runtime configuration, if I scroll up to the top, gives it basically information on how to run. So we have Net8, the NetCore app, Wasm Time, the main assembly, and some configuration properties that are going on there. So from there, I'm now able to just write my C-sharp code, my .NET code, and run and compile it into Wasm, and they'll run it inside of WASI directly. So there are a lot of possibilities, and this is just the start. Like this is an experiment, you know, workload on top of here. But you can think of it like now that you can access the file system, you know, there's actually support for native AOT, which is really cool. You could create super lightweight functions um, that you're executing. Uh, you could provide like little small portable HTTP servers that you could execute different things on. You could run them anywhere, which is really, really cool. So lots of really neat possibilities to think about putting .NET anywhere. And of course, since just like WebAssembly enables lots of different programming languages, it'd be easy to share these different microservices and all these little different things that you're building for WASM and WASI, which is really, really cool to think about. So executing that code anywhere. And to me, this is really exciting as a mobile developer, but as a desktop developer and not traditionally a web developer of taking this stuff and putting it anywhere. Anyways, let me know what you think about this stuff. I'm really jazzed on it. Um, I've really just been getting into it the last few weeks. I'll put a link to Rich's blog post and to all the different things that I showed off here. Check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you have any questions. If you wanna see more of this type of stuff, Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Really super appreciate it. And of course, if you like anything on this channel, subscribe so you stay up to date whenever I put out new videos. That's gonna do it for me. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.